Hi, welcome to Jesus on the Fly. We're back. We are back. Yes. Yay. It's always really exciting when the school year starts and when things get going and then we start doing like all the like regular stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe cool. do you like schedules at your house? We really like schedules. <laughs> yes, we like structure. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, today we're going to jump back into Matthew. That's where we were at last year for Jesus on the Fly. Jesus on the Fly, we go through um, the words and actions of Jesus um, in a non-intimidating fashion, like Pastor Dave. And I have not studied this in any way, shape, or form before this moment. And so we uh, will just do it on the fly and hear yeah. thoughts about this passage in Matthew. And then we'd love to hear from you in the comments. So. Yeah. Our disclaimer is that we may or may not actually think what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's mostly, I mean. No, we think it, but it doesn't mean it's right. Yeah, so. right? Always fact check us with the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Jesus on the Fly, Matthew 6, we're going to do verses 1 through 4. And the topic today then is, well, the, the heading says, giving to the needy, giving to the needy. So we'll see if that's where we go. Uh, six, one through four, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. All right, that's Matthew 6, 1 through 4. So, Dave, what do you think about this passage? What sticks out to you? Well, is I was thinking about the Pharisee and the tax collector story. You might so, have to tell us that story. Well, Do it quickly. So the tax collector, <laughs> like, comes and prays at the temple like um god like look how awesome i am and look no what I'm no doing. no you're mixing them up am i mixing you said the tax collector does that right? oh it's the pharisee who like does that the tax oh, collector yeah, the comes. pharisee sorry yeah you're <laughs> correct yes so the pharisee does that then the tax collector comes and says you know god be merciful to me a sinner and he's beating his breast and things like that and, and he's like then, struggling yeah you know that's you know who God sees as being like more righteous than the Pharisee guy. Yeah. I think that's so. an interesting idea because like that's presenting ourselves to God and set of people in both instances. Like this mm -hmm. one is about like how we give. So whether that's money, time, energy, how do we give it? And are we really giving to God? Or are we giving so that people like, like us or are happy with us or mm -hmm. accepted um, God's always concerned with us doing kind of anything in our life for him rather than for anything else. And, mm -hmm. you know, you like love your neighbor only really as an outcry of loving God. Otherwise our love for our neighbor is like tainted like crazy by our need to be like loved, valued and accepted. And that's not for that person at all then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was just like the good place. We were watching that episode about how <laughs> she's like, don't for the good follow place. or don't live your life um, trying to um, like be someone else or um, live up to someone else's expectations, you know, live for, you, you know, in that it's very un like biblical, but it's the idea that, you know, in our context, we would be living our life for God's expectations, not anybody else's. Mm -hmm. But even that's a little bit like confusing. I was just thinking about this today, actually for like myself and church workers that is our, you know, where we, we do the thing where other people may not know this, but like where you're presenting, you're teaching the Bible, you're, you know, trying to help other people understand the scriptures kind of like we're doing now, but it's different to like be in a Bible study, like for yourself to be fed by the word. Like you can live your whole life doing presentations, mm. but not 
actually being like where you're where you should be like in your relationship with God. So Whoa. That, that's what that I, my, that was just mind blowing to me. Like you can yeah. live your whole life for presentations like about Jesus and and not really be spending any time like with Jesus. I, that like really applies to my line of work. But <laughs> but I think about yeah. how that is then with giving. Like this passage in Matthew is like it's just so tempting to like do everything with a presentation, you know, and mm -hmm. um and we want we we can even do it like without um intending. And I mean I think that's like the big thing is like we're full of sin, so we'll always like double back and end up in sin one way or another, or like trying to get like some props for you know, some acknowledgement for what we did or whatever. But like I think that when we give, um, one of the first steps to like putting God at the forefront is like this passage points out, like just do it in secret, <laughs> like do it so people like literally can't see it, like no one knows. And I think maybe right. there's no presentation, no right. one, you right. have nobody to impress or anything. Right. And so like whether you're giving money or giving your time to God, like sitting with the Bible or doing whatever, like. I mean, Instagram is full of our pictures of, you know, oh, here's me like doing my little Bible time with my cup. And and while I'm an author, so I like super love when people post themselves doing Bible study, I wonder if it wouldn't help us if we took that first step of like doing something in secret with God, just us and God, mm -hmm. you know, because so often it's... Um, always like at a church or at yeah. with other people, which is good. I mean, I'm all about like no isolation, but like, what can we do in secret? What can we give in secret? Whether that's time, money or energy. Um, I also think that maintains dignity. You know, I mean, when we give to people and um, are like, here we, I'm giving to you. Um, Especially when we use words like needy, I mean, which is funny because it's in the subheading. But like, are is that a is that dignifying for that person? You know, mm -hmm. or are uh, we like pointing out things that are not helpful? Um, instead, just yeah, like doing it in secret. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's what stuck out to me from the passage that there's an option that we yeah. can do it without people knowing. I kind of like to, you know be like the secret agent like it's like doing stuff and people don't know what's going on like secret agent dave yeah well <laughs> okay i'll stop singing no okay so cool. you know. no. um no anyways it's like if you do something and no one else really does know about it it's like that's kind of fun. your secret with god mm. it's like god we have a secret and yeah and it's like i don't know it's, it's fun to be sneaky, I guess, when it's for a good cause. Oh, that's good. Sneaky for a cause. I like it. I feel like that could be a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, we'll wrap it up here soon. And I, we always like to ask a question. I feel like it's defeating of this topic to ask, how do you give in secret? So we almost need a better question, but like maybe just what kind of things could we do in secret? Like what are your ideas for other people that like, you know, you could be the secret agent and mm -hmm. go out and do something for someone or give in some way, um, philanthropically, if you will, mm -hmm. um, but do it in secret. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's, that ideas are good. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we need ideas. Yeah. Um, and I mean, maybe uh, some things that come to mind off the top of my head are giving uh, electronically. One thing I like about giving electronically is like pretty much every Sunday, it looks like you're not doing anything. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. there's like I mean, struggles there's downside, and issues still, with that. Yeah, yeah, I know. But sometimes I think about it, like, do I need I like, this card to put mm -hmm. in or is that for other people? Yeah. You know? I do kind of like the card that says I give electronically. Yeah, it's nice to have you that know? like. But that physical still, act of I mean, do you need that? Do you I know, really need that? I know. You see the highs and lows of both yeah. of those things. Okay, yeah. and then one more idea before we wrap up, I think that's more personal, is just like, you know, uh, neighbors. Like literal neighbors, like next door. What's a way I can give to my neighbor? Like secretly. <laughs> Secret. You know, and so I don't know, maybe Dave and I, we can talk about that later for ourselves. Like what can we do uh, for the people who live next door to us? But like they don't need to know it's us, you know, whatever. So, uh, 
All right, Dave, you want to pray? Pray us out sure. of here. All right. Dear God, thank you for reminding us that um, what's what's important to you, not that we present things to other people, but that we um, do them with our hearts and do them for you, um, for for the relationships that other people can have with you, but also our own personal relationship with you. And um, help us to stay focused on that. Um, help us to think of creative ways where we can um, do things without other people knowing and doing it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Jesus on Apply, every Thursday, noon, Central Standard Time, on the Christ in Norfolk uh, Facebook page. And you can catch the archive on the YouTube uh, I can't talk YouTube. <laughs> on the YouTube channel every every day, yes. anytime. All right, we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye.